AMD has scheduled the event to reveal the RX 6000 series of graphics cards. What can we expect and should you wait to buy? Let's get into it. There are many rumors going around on RDNA 2 and what some people term as Big Navi and it's very confusing unless you are following every single leak and rumor. Even then, it's confusing. We have just bits and pieces of information, much like the pieces of a puzzle. So I'm going to pull together those pieces into a puzzle to paint a picture of what we will likely see at the October event. Before that, let's review the competition RDNA 2 is facing in the release of NVIDIA's 30 series. NVIDIA threw the first punch with the release of the RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090. From a strategic standpoint, they were smart to release the 3090 now. The 3090 is the GPU Zilla of graphics cards, and it sets the bar so high that they know they can always claim they are the GPU king, regardless of cost. For gamers, this is not a value-oriented purchase. In my last video, I looked at NVIDIA's performance claims during their announcement and related them to Time Spy scores. And since then, we have two leaks of Time Spy scores that are about 5% lower than what I projected. Of course, that projection was based on NVIDIA's optimistic marketing claims in their slide, so this is to be expected. In any case, the performance upgrade will still be very good, not the greatest, but a very good generational upgrade. The response to the pricing of the 3070 and 3080 staying at the same levels as the previous generation has made Nvidia look like heroes for this generation. However, if you want to game at 4K, then the relatively low amount of VRAM won't age well over the years and is just bothersome for me. Even the 1080 Ti from March of 2017 had 11 gigabytes of VRAM and was sold for $699. And that price gap from the 3080 to the 3090 is big enough to drive a Mack truck through. From $699 to $1499, something will fill that gap. And those are the cars that will be their best as they respond to Big Navi. In the last video, I said we needed something from AMD, and well, AMD came back with a date for the event for the next generation RX 6000 series of graphics cards on October 28th. So, we have a date when they will announce, but when can we buy? If you remember back in June, AMD stated that the RDNA 2 will come to the PC first before the next gen consoles. Microsoft just announced the Xbox series to launch on November 10th. So if AMD didn't lie, then Big Navi will launch somewhere between October 28th and November 10th. I went through all the leaks and rumors to put together a picture of what we can expect AMD to release and how that would compete with Nvidia's 30 series lineup. Now I will caution that all of this is just based on rumors, and I chose the rumors that seem to fit together well like the pieces of a puzzle. Big Navi is RDNA 2, but RDNA 2 is not Big Navi. You can think of Big Navi as Big RDNA 2. From AMD, Big Navi is a Halo product. It is targeted to enthusiasts who love to buy the best, and AMD is working to give them the best. By definition then, the best RDNA 2 will be the biggest RDNA 2. Thus, Big Navi is Navi 21. It is the biggest die with the largest number of compute units. Everything else, like Navi 22 and Navi 23, is just RDNA 2. Call them medium and small if you like. Navi 21 is rumored to have 80 compute units, and that is the same as I stated in my video last March after AMD's Financial Analyst Day. What is new in the rumors is that the 80 compute unit Big Navi will also be released along with a 72 compute unit RDNA 2 and a 72 compute unit RDNA 2 with less VRAM. All three are on the same die, just with different number of compute units active. This is the same strategy that AMD has used for years. For example, for RDNA 1, in the release of the RX 5700 and 5700 XT, they had the same die but with 36 and 40 compute units active. Also, in the previous generations of Vega 56 and Vega 64, they also had the same die. Same with Polaris in the RX 570 and 580, and also the same with Fury and Fury X. This should not be a surprise. We can create a table that will match up the number of NVIDIA's streaming multiprocessors, or SMs, with the number of AMD's compute units. The RTX 3090 has 82 SMs, while the 3080 has 68. Now, 
How AMD decides to name these three GPUs will depend on how well they perform against the 3080. My expectation is that Big Navi with 80 compute units will be called the RX 6900 XT, the 72 compute unit version will be the RX 6800 XT, and 6800 non-XT. The non-XT version will have less VRAM. The recent performance leaks are not for Big Navi, or rather the larger die version in Navi 21. As AMD has learned over the years, the AIB partners leak everything immediately. So just as they get die and memory running on a test bench, you see these leaks all over the internet. That is why we have not heard of any leaks for the 72 or 80 compute unit RDNA 2. Navi 21, the larger die version, is not in the hands of AIBs. I expect AMD to sell only reference card versions when introduced, just like they did with the RX 5700 and 5700 XT. Based on the leaks of RDNA 2, its performance is just above the performance level of a 2080 Ti. This is not a Halo product, and it is surely not the best. It can't be Big Navi. The AIBs must be getting Navi 22 that will compete with the 3070. That is the version with fewer compute units, similar to what has been developed for the Xbox Series X. Also, my conservative estimates from my previous video suggest that a mid-level RDNA 2 can compete with the 2080 Ti, and this will eventually be the RX 6700 XT that will compete with the RTX 3070. I'm sure we'll be getting many leaks on this card over the next few weeks. Back to Big Navi. Will Big Navi compete with the 3090? No. It will not match its performance level, nor its VRAM level. How will AMD price these cards? That will depend on performance and their pricing strategy. Will they choose an aggressive pricing strategy like we all want? Or will they choose the slot-in strategy like they did with RDNA 1? AMD has shown with RDNA 1 that they priced their cards using the slot-in strategy and based their price on how their performance compared to their Turing counterparts. I fear that they will continue that strategy as it is more profitable than the aggressive pricing strategy. Using the slot-in strategy, if a 72 compute unit with the lower VRAM of 12GB is on par with the 3080, then they will price that at the same $699. The 72 compute unit version with 16GB would likely be $799, and if Big Navi is really good, then it will be $999. Again, it will depend on performance, and the price could adjust $50 to $100 up or down, depending on that performance compared to the 3080. How will NVIDIA respond? We have already heard of the rumors of the 3080 with 20 gigabytes of VRAM and a 3070 with 16, but how would they price those in the stack? The 3070 with 16 gigabytes would be the response to the RX 6700 XT with 16 gigabytes, and they could price it as high as 599. They don't have any headroom to price it any higher since the 3080 is at 699. Then what about the 3080 with 20 gigabytes? This will depend on how good is Big Navi. The indication so far is that Big Navi will be very competitive. That Big Navi is likely to force another iteration of the 3080 with more VRAM and possibly with a better bin chip for higher boost frequencies and higher performance. I don't know about you, but I was expecting more VRAM from today's 3080. To get just 10 gigabytes for 4K gaming at a $700 price point seems low. I don't think that will age well next year when more games at 4K can really utilize this hardware. I know that if I buy the flagship 3080 with just 10 gigabytes and they come out with a 20 gigabyte version later in response to Big Navi, I will not be happy. So for me, I will wait patiently knowing that there are not really a lot of games today that need these cards. For me, it's a nice to have, not a need to have. However, if you're still using a 980 or a Pascal card and you do not want to wait any longer, if you just want better performance now and don't care if they have further iterations later, then sure, go ahead and buy now. The immediate upside to these new cards in terms of absolute performance may not be significant enough to warrant the additional cost. Just keep in mind that Big Navi is likely to force Nvidia to another higher level card above the 3080. If you're at peace with that, then get it now. What I presented could be interpreted as a rosy red scenario with an AMD narrative. There are others who say we don't have proof of Big Navi with scores better than a 3080 and we may never see that. 
that they have seen this movie before. They have witnessed firsthand this history of AMD losing to Nvidia, and some of the leaks could be interpreted with a much worse outcome for Big Navi. That Big Navi will only be slightly better than a 2080 Ti, and that it will fall well short of matching Nvidia's 3080. AMD has failed to beat NVIDIA at the high end for more than a two week period since the introduction of GCN in the HD7970 way back in 2012. If Big Navi failed to deliver, then this would just be par for the course and go right up there with the failures in Fury, Vega, and Radeon 7. I will say that it is entirely possible that they could repeat history, that my selection of rumors fall into the category of confirmation bias and my desire for a competitive landscape. But the confirmation bias could go the other way and be based on previous failures and the belief in history repeating itself. However, I would counter to say that AMD has been executing rather well with Ryzen, Threadripper, Epic, and RDNA 1. With RDNA 1, they demonstrated they know how to make a competitive gaming architecture, that they are on a roll, they have a winning culture, the absolute best partner in TSMC, and the ability to execute on RDNA 2 is entirely possible. And while Nvidia looks to deliver a nice generational upgrade into the 3080, it's something AMD could easily have forecast. In some ways, AMD has more to lose this time around if they overpromise and underdeliver. For AMD to talk of, RDNA 2 will have a 50% performance per watt improvement over RDNA 1. Big Navi is a Halo product. Enthusiasts love to buy the best and we are certainly working on giving them the best. If they deliver only a 15% improvement over a 2080 Ti, then they are not giving enthusiasts the best. They are going to lose enthusiasts. They are going to lose the most vocal group that can help promote Radeon GPUs and they will continue to lose market share to Nvidia. Who will have any confidence in AMD GPUs after this? A 15% improvement over the 2080 Ti would represent a total failure to deliver. To get a 15% improvement, they could have just stuck with RDNA 1 and built a 64 compute unit version. Process improvements and voltage optimizations for lower power would take care of any power concerns. So you would be left wondering, what has the crew at Radeon Division been doing over the last 18 months to 2 years? This would not be just a blow to Radeon, but to AMD as a whole, a company whose stock has risen to great levels, however is not able to execute and deliver that Halo product. Many could see this as a sign that they are peaking, and could that loss of momentum translate to the other divisions? When AMD failed before on their GPUs, they were excused since they were just little AMD fighting against a giant. But now, their market cap has risen to heights not seen before. Expectations to deliver are much higher this time around. They have a responsibility to deliver not only to enthusiasts but also to their shareholders. Failure to deliver this time will have much greater implications since the expectations are high and many more people are watching this time. It's up to AMD to be responsible and temper expectations for a Halo product that just beats the competition's last gen flagship two years later. In any case, the date is set and time will tell. If you would like a little history lesson over the past decade on how AMD has battled with Nvidia over leadership and graphics cards, then check out my Big Navi series. Like it if you learned something, share this video to help support the channel, subscribe for more. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.